All right, well, fine. Check yeah. them out. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. I brought it. I brought you some stuff. Brought you some coffee. I from uh, uh -huh. that's all the way oh from Las God. Vegas, from that place we went. Know, so I've got some more for people that ask yeah. questions. I'm gonna put the rest over here. Yes. It's my my goodie bag. Uh, do I need a Stage clicker? I need a clicker. Probably. Over here. There. Okay. Yes. Great. How's everybody doing? Yeah. All right. How many people stayed out super, super late last night besides myself? <laughs> okay, yeah. Feeling it today a little bit? Yeah? No, of course not. It's beautiful. Um, it's, uh, it's great to be here. I'm, I'm all the way from Las Vegas. It took me a while to get here. Um, I'm really excited to be here, and I want to thank everyone for, for coming out this early, and thank you to Spark Me for having me. Um, this is really fun. <laughs> um, so you guys are probably wondering, what is Startup Mixology? So I'm going to give you a little bit of a background and, and really explain the metaphor. It's actually a metaphor. Um, so I started, I started out uh, my journey, my startup journey, about 15 years ago. How many people have been to New Orleans? Anybody? The Big Easy? OK, a couple people. All right, well, they had a huge hurricane hit in 2005. And right before that, I went to a conference similar to this. Where, and I was kind of, it was in between sessions, similar to like right now. And like I was trying to figure out, what do I go to? What should I listen in on? And I reluctantly sat in on this session about blogging. I was like, oh, I will never blog. That's so geeky. I would never do that. Who has time to write stuff on the internet? Um, it's so, so stupid. So I sat in, I just sat in reluctantly and, and watched. And it really opened my mind to, to new things. And, and I at, at the time, I was a developer. And I was building content management systems like WordPress and others for a big company, a uh, media company in, in Chicago. Uh, and so I decided to sit in. And I realized that these platforms that were blog platforms were really powerful. So I started testing them testing them. And that turned into writing every single day for five years. <laughs> so um, be careful what you sit in on. Uh, <laughs> and so anyway, I turned into a real geek, blogging about everything and covering it on a, a site called Somewhat Frank. And in doing so, I connected with the rest of the blogosphere at the time. And it was, um, give you a little bit of my past. So here we are, 2000 to 2005 now. We're s we, I started something called Somewhat Frank. I was at the Tribune at the time. So how many, how many people have heard of the Chicago Tribune, the LA Times, uh, the WGN TV? They've got like, they own like 30-something stations and uh, newspapers. And I was building the content management systems to power all those things. And so I started testing these and started blogging and covering the latest technologies. And really, right away, realized that you could connect with people immediately. And as a developer, I was like, wow, I could like build a product and then launch it on my site and connect with people and have customers. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> like, it really streamlined the process. So that that's when I really got hooked and realized that I could, I could start up. I could create a company and, and start building it. So I started a company called Splog Reporter. It was written up in the Wall Street Journal, uh, quoted next to Mark Cuban. This is all in within a few months of starting to blog. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> Best thing I ever did. Uh, and then, you know, started writing for TechCrunch. I was the first writer for TechCrunch. How many of you have heard of TechCrunch, right? So yeah, Michael, Michael Arrington and I connected on my blog, Somewhat Frank. He used to comment about my writing. And we connected. And I started writing really big pieces for, uh, for TechCrunch and in 2005, so right when it started. So uh, you know, fast forward to now, it's owned by AOL and everything. Um, and then I, at the same time, started this other thing called Tech Cocktail. So that's where the metaphor for startup mixology comes. I started a company called Tech Cocktail, which the idea was to create a place where you could amplify the local technology scene, and both online and off. And it started very event-driven. So we'd host events in Chicago and other cities and bring the community together, showcasing startups. And uh, it really took off, because it was before social. It was before Twitter and Facebook and people connecting you know, online and then coming and meeting people offline. And so it was kind of early for that. So we'd had thousands of people come out to our events in, in these different cities. And you know they'd meet over <laughs> at these events and realize, wow, there's a tech community here. There's startups happening. Uh, and now that stuff's really you know, prevalent everywhere. So it's really was early on. And uh, kept going. But I ended up leading up products for AOL. So how many people have used AOL or AIM or anybody, any ICQ, anything like that? OK, a couple of people have heard of it. OK, pretty, pretty much was the internet back in the day, <laughs> for the US anyway. And uh, so we, I built products for them. And then decided, I decided at a certain point, like I can't let Tech Cocktail go anymore. I've got to build this full time. So in 2010, I started taking it on full time. We rebranded as TechCo, and that's where we are today. And we're a media platform. We offer a, a platform for anybody that's a thought leader to share their knowledge. So we have thousands of contributors all over the, all over the world um, that we, we vet and then edit and get all their, their content out. And we give them a platform to our audience of millions. So uh, we're doing that now, and we're covering cities, we're covering thought leadership topics, and 
we're jumping into universities too to kind of bubble up the interesting things that are and amplify the things that are happening in these different places. Uh, I did write a book called Let's Start Mixology. The idea there was, again, metaphorically, to come up with all these different ingredients that go into um, starting and running a business. And really, you know, with the mission of you know continuing to help entrepreneurs enjoy the startup journey uh, prov by providing resources, connections, and community. And along the way, I've, I've learned from a lot of different people, right? I've, I've connected with people like Tony Conrad. I've known him for over a decade. Uh, we, so we actually acquired his for his one of his companies at AOL. Uh, literally, my first day at AOL, I met with him. I was like, we should talk about Sphere. And ultimately, we ended up buying it. So um, it wasn't my direct doing, but it was kind of funny that we've, we're still connecting at these types of events years later. But yeah, people like him and others along the way. And so I shared some of those, those stories uh, of their, their successes and their, their ingredients in Startup Mixology. And there are a lot of ingredients. Today, I'm not going to talk about the 20-something ingredients. I'm just going to focus on one, one that I think is super important and totally unrepresented by people. They don't think about it. They're very product. Like, how many people have ideas, right? Do you all have ideas, things you want to do? No one has any idea. Did you guys, you guys really went out hard last night. <laughs> you didn't, no ideas today? Come on, somebody, somebody has to have an idea. Okay, one person has an idea. Great. You're going you're gonna to do something with that. Um, the rest of you, come on, think of something. <laughs> No, but more or less, everyone has ideas, right? And they want to create something, and, and uh, you know, ultimately, you end up going and building it and building and building it and maybe not connecting with the right people to make that successful. So, um, you know, in, and in my experiences, you know, this is actually a quote. It's not my quote. In my experiences, there's no such thing as luck. Anybody recognize this quote? Who? Who rec anybody? Okay. Yeah. Wow, good one. Yes, it's <laughs> the Jedi <laughs> role model. Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, he didn't believe in luck. Do you guys believe in luck? Okay. Yeah, so some people may have gotten lucky last night. I don't know. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm, just, I'm just saying, it could have happened. Um, so people, some people don't believe in luck. There's, don't tell the Irish, but you know, there are definitely people that believe in luck and the people that don't. All right, so more or less, there is, is you know, I believe in luck, but at the same time, there's a way to increase that, that luck or that luck surface area. A guy named by the name of Jason Roberts came up with the term luck surface area, so I don't want to take his credit, but it's more or less about talking about your ideas and then working on your ideas. So if you're just doing one or the other, if you're just talking about them or you're just working, if you're just working on them, who's going to know about it, right? You're not going to be able to connect. So ultimately, this comes back to building relationships, though. And as you do that, you, cre you capture luck. So really, again, boom, it's right about uh, relationships, right? You're like, why is he talking about relationships? That's weird. I know people. I talk to people. All right, how many people here have know the people next to them? Just a few. Oh, you all just hang out with the people you know? Come on. <laughs> no, but what my point is, is you could actually, you, it's about people, right? And you can connect with people at things like this. And you're probably thinking, people, this is pretty basic. It is basic, but people forget it, right? They forget that, you know, this is an important part of building a, a business, building a company, or, or even working at a bigger company. So the secret here, oh, by the way, I love llamas. <laughs> so you have to throw a llama slide in there. Um, Anybody else like llamas and alpacas? Yeah. They spit. Oh, yeah, they do. All right, so he, they're telling each other a secret. And the secret here is that you just never know where anyone's going to end up, right? You could meet somebody at a, something like this, and you just don't know where they're going to go. So it's really important to focus on people and your network development versus just focusing on your product development. So product development is pretty simple. You've got this idea. It's your precious, and you're going to go build it out. Well, Yes, you can do that, but if you don't actually have a network, <laughs> it's going to be really hard to find your other employees. It's going to be really hard to find your customers. It's going to really, you may, not, you may not be building something that's the right fit for your customers. You may not have any customers, actually. So it's, you know, by going out there and socializing and meeting people and talking, you're going to increase your luck surface area, which ultimately is going to create more opportunity for you down the road and create serendipitous opportunities for you. So really, I mean, this is very much, it, it's, it seems like it's really trivial, but people forget this all the time. I've met with thousands of companies. And they just, they don't do this. Like, they focus on the product, the product, product. And then they come, they, they launch the secret product. And was like, fuck, I didn't want that. I didn't want that at all. Like, I didn't even know, like, I didn't want, oh, can I swear on, t on here? I didn't, sorry, okay, okay, good, yeah. Sorry about that, that just slipped out. Um, so, yeah, so basically today we're going to talk about the two co different kinds of, of relationships. Uh, and there may be a few others that we can talk about too. But it's the one-to-ones, right, meeting people, connecting with them, learning about them, and then the one-to-many, which is a little bit more broadcast. And I'd even say that the one-to-one -one can turn into one-to-many. So I connect with another person like at an event like this, and that person has a network and might open up the many, right? So that's a possibility too. Or if on social, like if I tweet something or share something, 
I'm connecting with somebody at one to one, and then if they they continue to expand that, they could share it with the many, right? So there's a couple different ways, but we're gonna st first start talking about the one on one to one. So again, folks, you guys are sitting next to your friends, aren't you? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not gonna make you all switch around. Normally I would. It'd be a little difficult in this situation. That would be total chaos for a good ten minutes, um, and I don't have that much time, but. Normally, I'd say, okay, switch around so you can meet other people, because really it's about the people in the, in the seats next to you that you could connect with, and you don't know, like I said, you never know where anyone's going to end up or what, they, what they're doing, and you can create really, forge really great relationships that last for a long time. And the one-to-one -one is, is, is really important, and I'll tell you why. This guy, Logan LaHive, uh, he, was, he had an idea. He used to work at a big company, uh, Redbox. He had an idea. He used to come to our events in Chicago. And he, he, he came out and hung out with different people and met them. At one particular event in Chicago a few years ago, he was out late, kind of like last night. And um, <laughs> sure enough, he ended up going to the after event, which he was hanging out with these people he'd met at this, our, this, uh, this event we hosted. And those people had a great night. I think they were out till 2, and then he reali didn't realize that he was who he was connecting with. And then a week later, he was out pitching his idea. Turns out he went to Lightbo Lightbank, which is a VC firm that f backed Groupon in Chicago. People familiar with Groupon? Okay, he, they've also backed other stuff, but more or less, um, he, met, he was meeting with these folks to pitch his idea and try to get investment. And little did he realize that the people he was out till two in the morning with a week before were all the investors that he was pitching. So you can imagine that as he goes into this meeting, he's like, whoa, we already know each other. <laughs> this is a little bit better relationship that they already had. And so it kind of helped them, you know, fast forward to now, they've, they invested, they were the lead investor in their, their first round and Belly's been growing like crazy. They've raised a couple, you know, a lot of, lot of different rounds now and they're growing everywhere. So the idea there, though, is you've got to go out and connect with people and share your ideas, and then you never know where those are going to end up. Here's another one. Zvi Band, he's out of D.C. He's got a company called Contactually. Zvi was a developer. Like, he wanted to really develop and, and do his thing, he, and he, wasn't, he was introverted and didn't really want to go out and meet people. Um, his quote, actually, is kind of funny. He used to say, networking is fucking bullshit. <laughs> and that was his kind of mantra. And he's like, I don't want to do it. I just want to build stuff. And that's fine, you know? And... But that was what he used to say, and he's like, and then he realized, like, I mean, he was trying to start a, a company, a startup, and he realized he didn't know anything about starting up, really. He didn't know the people, he didn't know what to do, and so he needed to go out and connect with people and learn from them. And so he started going out to different events and doing different things to connect with people, both online and off. And what that turned into was he realized he was really terrible at keeping up with relationships, like actually connecting with people and staying in touch and, and whatnot. Now there's so many touch points online, and now, you know, it's hard to keep up. So... He actually scratched his own itch and created a pro product called Contactually, which is a basically a really light uh, uh, CRM or relationship management platform. And it allows you to remember people when, you know, when things are happening and connect with them and continue to stay in touch. And so he built this product, and the, the ironic part is all the different opportunities he went out to meet with people, he ended up getting funded. And uh, he realized that you know, all the people that invested in his company, 13 of, out of 15 were in his own network that he had already met through his, his, uh, his going out and connecting and building these relationships. So it's, it's another point that, you know, the one-to-one -one is super important and uh, very much underserved. Okay, so how do you do this? Here it's pretty simple, right? You figure out, oh, I like to talk to that person. I'm going to go talk to them, uh, make a really fun intro. Uh, hey, you know, more than how are you? You know, something a little more creative than that right now. Um, that's all I can think of right now, but I'm sure you can come up with something else. Maybe you follow them on something, or you Snapchat with them, but you don't meet, know them in, in life, that in real life. That, that happens all the time. You meet the person, and then you stay, stay in touch and repeat. Seems pretty straightforward, right? But people actually have a hard time with some of this. And if you're not really good at talking to people, maybe you need a wingman or wingwoman to help you. Somebody that could help be the icebreaker for the conversation and get you in there, because then once you're in there, you can, you can do the rest. You, know, you can do the talking and whatnot. But it's that, that icebreaker is sometimes hard. Another way to really connect great with people is through warm introductions. We heard Tony Conrad yesterday. How many people listened to Tony Conrad yesterday? Right? A bunch of people. So he was talking about how, do, how, does he get, how does he actually look at his investments. He doesn't even look at his inbox. He gets pitched 50 times a day. He doesn't even read them. So he actually values the relationships that he has already more than the, his inbox. And so what he's saying is, you know, get a warm intro from somebody, and it's going to go a lot further. And that's, that's the case with a lot of people these days. So warm intros, wingmen come up with some in great intro to connect with people. Those are kind of basics. And then, you know, stay in touch and repeat. Uh, this is a really important, how many people read How to Win Friends and Influence People? Great book, right? It's one to live by. I've given it to other friends and relatives. Uh, it was written in like 1936, I think. So it's been around a quite, a, wh quite some time. But this quote is super important and, and pretty much underlying, you know, everything that has to do with relationships, right? People care about themselves and what they care about. 
So it's super important for you to realize that and try to get in, in their shoes for a moment and realize their perspective. They may not care about your product. <laughs> they may not care about what you're doing. They may not, they care about themselves. So try to figure out an angle that actually makes sense for connecting with them in, on kind of on their terms. And think about it that way with people when, when they're, you know, they're trying to do different things, managing their time and whatnot. All right, so now that we've kind of covered some of that stuff, I think you, know, you, you meet somebody and you want to follow up. Like the, it's, a, it's a connection that you think is important and you want to continue to foster. Um, this is a simple kind of outline for what you might do. You might want to do like a 15-minute coffee with that person. Let's say they might be a, a, a customer or potentially a new hire. Try to keep it tight. I mean, it's kind of like dating, right? Like you kind of got to, it's your first date with this new person and you, you want to keep a tight little coffee going so that you can have an escape if it doesn't go well and they can have an escape. And so you're basically, you're going out to meet somebody, you're grabbing coffee and you're listening. You're not sitting there pitching them. I can't tell you how many times I get pitched about their product and I don't even get a word in. And so that's a little bit of a turnoff for people, and not just me, but others. And so you need to, it's got to be a conversation, and it's got to be, you know, you've got to listen more than you put out, I guess. All right, so, and the, you know, then obviously there's a few more tips, and then you just stay in touch, right? And maybe, maybe down the road there's an opportunity that they can be helpful to you, or you can be helpful to them, or whatever, but it doesn't really matter, because you're actually trying to build a relationship, and then that kind of stuff happens. So here's some one-to-one -one relationship tips. So give first, right? So... Try to help them. See if there's different ways that you can help this person before you are sitting there asking for things. Um, be patient. It may not be, the opportunity might not present itself. Like, I doubt that, like, a Tony Conrad or Brian Solis at something like this really wants to get bum-rushed at the event <laughs> afterwards with, like, getting pissed or whatever. I think it's probably better to find another opportunity to connect in a little bit different situation so that they have an, a, a sense of who you are and it's not just one right after another. I'm just thinking like that, but even with the people next to you, maybe there's, um, maybe it's not the right time to connect with them. Maybe, maybe you can wait to like a, a different coffee break or something, uh, partly because I'm talking and I don't want everyone talking right now. That was a joke. Come on, guys. <laughs> You're good listeners. <laughs> Uh, so be a good listener. Yeah, yeah, right. Like be a good listener. Uh, continue to remember things and care. I think that's a really important one. I know it sounds really trite, but care about that person. Remember things. Like you just met them, but remember what they say. Like it's kind of important that you remember. Like if they tell you like my favorite color is blue, remember that. If they tell you their birthday, remember that. And if you can't remember it, write it down. Like put it a note in your phone and be like, oh, that person likes you know unicorns. I like unicorns too. Sweet, we have that in common. That'll, that'll kind of add as like this element. So next time you connect, you can be like, yo, remember that? I saw this really cool unicorn the other day, and then here you go. So, um, so that's just an opportunity to, to kind of try to make mental notes of the things that people like and, and dislike, and so that as you connect, you can continue to foster better relationships. Uh, and then obviously, this is kind of golden rule, do unto others, right? Don't, uh, you know, that, does everyone kind of follow that anyway? Or is that, am I preaching the choir? Or no, okay. So, and then stay in touch, obviously. There's different ways to stay in touch now. There's online, there's offline, there's, you know, you can Skype people, you can do whatever, but it's important to continue to, to foster those relationships. All right, so we're pretty good on one-to-one. -one. And I should say that one-to-one -one can amplify to one-to-many if you find somebody that's really, you really connect with and then they connect you with their, their many or their network or whatever. And so uh, that's another reason one-to-one -one is super important. Okay, and then one-to-many is a little bit more broadcast, but people are, um, it's a super important for your business too. So you're, you're going out and you're connecting with people like this, right? I'm talking to all of you. I can't continued, I can't literally have a conversation with every single, although I would love to. We could start down here and I could just go, this would take a long time. But I could literally have a con conversation back and forth and back and forth, but it'd be impossible for me to scale this right now. <laughs> I'd love to meet you all, so let's figure out a way to do that, but this is not the right opportunity. But what I, I guess I'm saying is, there are people that do it really well in a one-to-many, and I, I want to kind of point out some of those people. I mean, obviously, the folks like Brian Solis are, are great at it. He's, he's out connecting in the world and then making those interactions happen um, online. But I want to talk about uh, Daniel Morell from Mattermark. How many people are familiar with Bit Mattermark? No one? Okay. So basically, she's, she started at uh, Twilio, which is going to IPO soon. Uh, she was the marketing lead w when they first started, and then she went on to Y Combinator, which is an accelerator, and started with Furley, and then decided, you know, I've got this opportunity. I think there's not enough information for investors out there uh, covering the startups that are out there and the things that are, that are happening. And so she created this product for investors to figure out what they should invest in, more or less, and then started really sharing that information publicly and becoming really a thought leader by sharing and creating conversations online. So she started putting out newsletters, and I mean, there's a lot of people who get her newsletter and, and just read the whole thing every single time because it's got such great information in it. And then she started writing, and she started speaking, and she started to really get out there. But it wasn't just about getting out there. She actually then would get engaged, too. So if you're on Twitter or other places, she would, like, 
connect with you and ask you questions. And she was very transparent about it, like some of the, the ups and downs of starting a business. And because of that, you know, I actually, I've known her for a long time. I've known, I've known her, right? It's like we, we have 208 connections on LinkedIn that are in common. So we have a lot of common friends and, and, and whatnot. And then, you know, ultimately, though, I did not m actually meet her until last year when she spoke at our Celebrate conference uh, last fall. So I knew of her, but I didn't really meet her, but I felt like I did because she does such a great job connecting online with people as well as, you know, extending that, you know, offline too. So that's what I'm saying is I feel like I know her, but I didn't know her. And there's a lot of people like that that do a really good job in building that personal brand and extending it so you have that personal connection in a one-to-many way. Another great example is Brad Feld. How many people are familiar with Brad Feld? Okay, so he's an investor. He's invested in a lot of different things um, that have done really well. He's also written seven books. Um, he started Techstars, which is another accelerator, uh, and he's got Foundry Group, which is a VC firm. And he's really out there. He's, um, he's a huge investor. Like, he, he was part of uh, basically uh, Ma MakerBot, right? We've heard of MakerBot, which did really well. Uh, he was part of Fitbit, which IPO'd and did really well, uh, as well as a slew of others. So, huge investor. But he's out there communicating with people all the time. Like he's he's got a blog called Feld Thoughts. He's writing on all the time. He's on Twitter, and he's he's you send him something, he'll he'll respond. Like he is on it. Um, and so I guess my point is, he's he, again a great example of somebody that's doing the back and forth, and not just the broadcast. Oh, aren't I great? Kind of situation. And I think it's super important to understand the difference between getting out there and being that thought leader and being very one way. Because there are people you can go out and build a following. There's people that have huge followings, but they don't communicate with with anyone. Like, it's just a, here, go listen to my shit. Like, I'm the best. You know, that's what kind of the approach is there. And you don't really want to do that. You want to build a kind of a personal brand and rapport with everyone so that you can scale yourself to actually connect with everyone. Because, like I said, I can't do it individually, but I, I could, if you connected with me on other ways, I could follow up with you and we could connect in that way. So, um, so I definitely think it's important to, to, to kind of make that note on the difference. But the key thing that they've both done really well is they've engaged, right? They've, they've engaged with the, the people that they're, they're talking to, and it's not just a one-dimensional, one-way scenario where they're talking at you, and they're trying to build these relationships um, out there on the, in the world, mostly on the web, because it's so big, right? And then in, in person, too, at different speaking gigs and, and things that they do out in the world. Uh, even, you know, through, through their books and things like that, you, can, you feel like you have a better connection because they're so transparent, and they're not just sharing the, the stuff that's, you know, oh, it's a beautiful day and um, everything's awesome. They're sharing, like, man, like, I went to go do a, actually, this is kind of funny. Brad Feld, I went to go speak in Boulder. He was supposed to do a fireside chat with me around my book tour a couple, like a year ago. The, the day that I was supposed to go, he fell off his bike and ended up in the hospital. It was terrible. Like, I, we don't, he, like, thankfully, he's fine. He cracked his helmet and he was good, but... You know, basically, that got shared with the internet because he's out there and he's transparent. He's like talking to people, and people were like talking back. And so, somebody that huge that's doing that is pretty impressive to me because he's able to manage and scale himself to in a very one-to-many way. But he's doing it because he's engaging and he cares, right? He's not just doing it because he wants to be the thought leader and everyone, you know, follow him. Okay, so it's super important to remember that you're, when you're going out and talking to people, you're actually trying to really create create friends and, and lasting relationships. It's not just about networking at people. And I think Miha Baldwin, this is Miha, he started a bunch of companies, and he kind of, he's got a great way of saying, he's like, he really doesn't consider himself having a network, he just has a bunch of friends. Well, that, but he's also, Miha knows everyone. <laughs> so I, I think that he's approaching it the right way. He's looking at it as I'm making friendships that last, and he's learning about people versus just going out and, um, you know, creating these, you know, getting someone's business card and be feeling connected. So I think it's super important for you to remember this as you're building, whether it be working at a big company or small, building products. Don't just focus on the product development. Focus on the network development because then it'll be more fun, right? You're going to meet all these great people and enjoy the journey together. So I think that's the main thing that I really wanted to get, get home today. So, and ultimately, I want you to remember that people care about themselves and what they care about and believe in. So something to live by as you're building these, these lasting relationships and friendships. And that's really all I wanted to talk about today. This is my book, S Startup Mixology. It's lessons learned from Zappos, WordPress, Sweetgreen, Basecamp, Uber, and thousands of others. Um, so check it out if you get a chance. It's online all over the place, but you can also, if you really don't read a lot and you'd like to listen, I actually read the audiobook too, so that's kind of fun. And there's some special guests there. The foreword is by Zappos CEO Tony Shea, uh, and there's a bunch of other special guests as well. So thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. And if, if you want to connect, here's my information. Uh, you can email me, you can tweet me or Instagram or Snapchat me, and then there's our Twitter too. Do you want to come over here? Oh, and don't leave. That's the this, we're not done. Uh, what? We're, we're not done here, right? We're doing a Q&A.
Yes. Okay. Sure. Where do you want to sit? You sit oh, you there. sit there? Okay. <laughs> All right. So your book oh. is... Uh, with Can I drink like that? That's for you. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> So your your book has like millions of quotes of different people. Do you know how many people you mentioned oh in the book? Oh, there's hundreds. Yeah, there's a lot of people in there. Um, I don't remember the exact number. We did have to okay. count at some point. What we did is we, we, we reached out to our startup community and asked them for stories. And the, the way the book is actually set up is there's a lead story about a specific ingredient followed by, you know, the harsh realities about that. So not just sunshine and rainbows. It's yes. like, what are the things that are really hard? And then how do you get through it? And I, I think that celebration and creating celebrations to motivate is super important. Mm -hmm. So every chapter is like that. And we, we crowdsourced some of the stories from our community and said, hey, tell me a story about when you had a really tough time hiring people. Or tell me a story when you, you, you had a really tough time with this. Or tell me the hardships of when you were bootstrapping. Like, what are the things that you had to get through? Okay. And people shared, and then we put some of them in the book. And so I have a book. If s so if I don't know if we're going to do questions, but I have a book for people if they want to check it out. I'll we give that as, an, as a kind of a prize. And I gave you your coffee, right? Yeah. Yes, my okay. coffee's there. Okay, I better not give away my sunglasses. Okay. Okay, so you are uh, in 2009, 2011, and 13 was, name were was named by Forbes as one of the most connected people in yes. tech. Yes. And by, 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 the, by the book, yep. definitely. And uh, actually, everybody is mentioning whoever we call to be a speaker, mm -hmm. we mention your name and people know you. Mm -hmm. How did you do that? Relationships matter. Like, you go out and you meet people and you connect with them, and we, we've connected with a lot of people in real life. Um, basically through what we do and just being in the industry for 15 years, like doing this at big companies and, and doing my own thing, you just meet a lot of people and you stay in touch. I mean, it's really about relationships and managing them and, you know, being good to people and caring about them. So you, you spoke here about uh, product development, but, but also actually more about network, network development. development is so development. much more important. Uh, I, one of my friends here said that they want to denerd their company because yep. they have a problem. They mm -hmm. have great products, yep. which actually look look great for for them, mm -hmm. but actually have no real use because of right because they haven't gone out and connected with people probably. Yeah. And I think that's a big that's kind of what I was getting at is like you could have the most successful you know or best developers in the world, but if they in the smartest people in, on the planet, but if they if you don't actually get out and get talking to people and mm -hmm. sharing with people and, and connecting with people, it's not going to go anywhere, right? It's going to be in your little silo of development love and everyone's going to be awesome. are you actually born as somebody who can connect and network with people or do you think that's something that everybody can learn? It can be acquired. I mean, look at Zvi Band. Like, he hated meeting people. Like, he didn't want to go out and talk to people. Yeah. He's a developer. He's a great developer. And he wanted to basically just code all the time. Mm -hmm. And he, he had to push himself, uh, you know, push, his pa push himself past that limit to go out and connect and meet all these people. And that changed his entire trajectory for, his, for himself, his life, and his business. He's got a super successful company now. And he would never have gotten to where he is without getting out of his comfort zone. So uh, you, a, as TechCo, actually mm -hmm. organize all of these events all around the U.S. and yeah. have one big in Las Vegas, Yeah, right? so we actually... Connecting startups. Yeah, we do an event. It's called our Startup of the Year program. We've been doing it for a long time around the country. And we try to really find the early stage companies. We do events that bring people together. And then a couple companies go on to our, mm -hmm. our finals, which are at the end of the year. We're actually moving it this year to San Jose uh, and partnering wow. with a big organization as well to, to do a bigger thing in San Jose this year. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's the kind of the culmination. And then... Um, you know, those, those offline kind of events are super important for people mm -hmm. uh, to connect like this and, and make, you know, make those great lasting relationships happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and you live in Las Vegas. I do. I live in Las Vegas. <laughs> Sunshine State. Can no. you tell <laughs> people here something yeah. about the downtown project? Well, I usually when I hear, when people hear you lo live in Las Vegas, they're like, oh, really? Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> uh, it's one of those places that you don't really, um, <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking when I hear that. So I'm just like. Um, but I, I, I moved there about four years ago. I'm from Illinois, and I was w for AOL, I was living in D.C. and working in Mountain View, California, so Silicon Valley, basically. And so those are the three places I spent the most time recently. But uh, I moved there about four years ago. Uh, a friend of mine, Tony Shea, is the CEO of Zappos. And how many people are familiar with Zappos? Yeah. I, I order shoes there. Okay. These, these are actually from there. Um, you can buy other stuff there, too. But you go to Zappos.com, you can find everything. But anyway, Tony, he... He wanted to really um, help the community in downtown Las Vegas, so he moved Zappos out there from San Francisco years ago. They sold to Amazon. He then had a lot of Amazon stock, and he started selling it, and he sold about 350 to $400 million in, in, in his stock. And in doing so, he now is like, okay, I want to build the downtown of Las Vegas, which if you think about Las Vegas, what do you guys think about? Gambling, like 
the strip and things. That's what you hear about, is right? They're really good at marketing the Vegas brand and everything, you know, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Not true, actually. But really good at that. So that's what most people think about. And so when they think about, when I tell people I live in Vegas, they're like, oh, you must be a gambler and, you know, you must love strip clubs and everything else. I don't gamble. I don't really have any vices other than, and you know. And you're raising your child there. And I have a child, yeah. So it's a good place. It's just more or less, he, he started to want to build a downtown. There was no place to walk. There was no walkable community. He wanted to create a walk, live, work, play kind of community. And he moved the, the Zappos headquarters there. And so we got out there about four years ago. And we're like, with, the, with his, when he was just laying the plans out, we're like, damn, this is going to be interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen other communities grow. Like, you know, when I started doing stuff in Chicago, it was before there was a lot of investment, before a lot of startups were really doing things. Um, same with DC. And it was like, wow, we could really help here and maybe, you know, start doing some things to better connect the community and, you know, really watch this experiment unfold. And, and that's really what it, what it was about. And, you know, or fast forward to today, when I got there, there was zero, there was zero, like, coffee shops and things to do. Now there's, like, over 50 different small businesses. There's he invested 100 startups in, like, two years. So there was a lot of activity there. Um, some didn't, aren't, weren't successful. I just got a note today that my favorite green smoothie place is going to shut down June 10th. I'm pretty sad about it. But it's one of those things, it's not every business is going to be successful. Yeah. Uh, leaves an opportunity for somebody else to come in and do, maybe do it better or figure it out, um, which is what happened with our donut shop. There's a place called O-Face Donuts. It was a downtown project donut shop, which I love. They shut down, and then six months later, uh, there's a new donut shop called Donut Bar, and they're crushing it. They're doing great. There's literally a line out the door every single day. So it's basically a community of startups and their families living in one place, yep. which was before a part of downtown. Yeah. Before uh, you wouldn't go there. Like it was downtown yeah. was kind of a like all the locals that live in Vegas are like when I even when I tell them that I live in downtown Vegas, they're like, oh, because it's like one of those places that Dark people area. would go to die. <laughs> 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 and I hate to say that, but that's what it was like. You could walk an extra block and get like stabbed. I mean, but now you have kids playing there. Yeah, playground. now there's kids playing there. Schools. I mean, granted, there's still areas like I won't walk like but it's six blocks further than I would have walked four years ago. So it's, it's a community. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. <laughs> Who wants you want to call on people? Because I'm. I just like to call on everyone. Do we have Mike somewhere? Here. Here. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, so my question is, what is the most bitter ingredient in startup mixology that we should all be aware of before drinking? So not for age under 18, right? Right. No, you so say the, the most important ingredient? Is that what you said? Uh, the most bitter. Like bitter. hard. Oh, hard to har swallow. <laughs> well, I think it's important to understand that not everything's going to work the way you want. Um, and that's why I formatted the book the way I did, is everything you do, it's, an, it's a freaking roller coaster. It's not a merry-go-round, right? Like, it's, it's going to be freaking really hard. And you got to understand that going in, that there's going to be days that you don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to do anything, but you do. And you, what actually can help you with that is celebration, like building momentum events into your everyday to make it fun. Because as when you're building a company, it's very isolating, and there's, you know, it's a long road. It's a little different than when you're at, maybe it is, it's not that different than big companies. Sometimes launching a big, things at a big company can be really hard and to do. But more or less at that point, there's probably an end in sight. Whereas in a startup, it could go on for a, a while where you're just like, it's just, you're like grinding it out day after day after day, long hours and whatnot. And it's, it can be really tough unless you build these little momentum events in, into that. And I call it celebration. Some people might just call it, you know, building different milestones, <laughs> yeah, but more or less, bless you. It's it's about like creating those opportunities because otherwise it's just going to be tough, right? Y it's it's an up and down thing, and every you know there's highs and lows every single day. So understand that that the harsh reality is that you're going to go through a lot when you do this. Jennifer, so be ready. Jennifer, there. Is Stop. it on? First, I want to say thank you for the coffee. Um, oh. Five bloggers sat together who <laughs> didn't know each other, and we networked. Oh. So for your co good oh, coffee, good. Yeah, so thank you. That's a pla that's from a local place downtown downtown Vegas. My favorite coffee shop. So I hope awesome. you enjoy it. My question is, um, I find that Brian was talking about people becoming more um, introverted. Mm -hmm. As um, so, what is some advice, some mental advice to get people to c um, enter the conversation at kind of a social anxiety is in a rise. People are nervous about confronting mm -hmm. or just even not confronting, excuse me, meeting someone, being mm -hmm. introduced. Um, yeah. Because networking is hard because it's um, kind of like breaking the wall. What is some advice that you would give people to 
start the conversation. Icebreaker advice, basically? I mean, because, yeah, you're right. Like, there's so many ways to connect with people now, and it is hard to manage and keep, uh, keep up with. But I think you've got to pick your – it's kind of like <laughs> – you don't want to go in, like, hard. You want to kind of figure out the right angle to come in and, and, and connect in some way. So figure out a way that you might be able to connect with a person if you are talking to them online. Like, maybe you both like coffee, or maybe you both like whatever. Maybe you enter the conversation that way. So find your seam in, in the conversation, especially online. It's easier. Offline – you're, you're going to have to like quickly figure it out, and maybe there's some way to like get an intro from somebody so it makes it a little bit more of a warm lead than just like coming up to someone. At the end of the day, sometimes you just got to introduce yourself, and if it goes well, it goes well. But if you're having, if you start the conversation, you, what you're going to try to do is kind of come up with a common area where you both have an interest quickly, and that way, then you can talk about that, right? That's pretty basic, but yeah, I mean, there, it is becoming harder to keep track of all your connections and connect with everyone everywhere, but. Um, you can definitely still find that seam and, and find that opportunity to connect with people socially. Does that help? We had one question over there. Yeah. Um, I definitely, I also have more coffee, so I don't know if you want more coffee for... Oh yes. Know? Okay. <laughs> First <laughs> couple <laughs> questions. So who's got questions now? Actually, I only have two coffees. So I have two coffees and a book. <laughs> okay. You, have like you, you will have to... Because I'm not... There we go. Do you want coffee? Oh, book? Okay. See? Yep, sorry. Yeah, definitely. One more coffee, so... W will I get anything? <laughs> you get to ask, you ask Matt, me a question? You, you do. We've got to wait to see what the question is, though. Fan? See? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, what's the, what be. is the question? Uh, I have actually two questions. Okay, we well only get one coffee. One coffee, okay. <laughs> uh, my first question is, do you have any advices when you mess up your first impression? I don't give up. Uh, and the second one, do I get a chance to connect with you? Yeah, of and course. Yeah. So the question was, do you have any advice for like when you if you mess up a connection? There's always advice. You can always. This is life. You can rewrite things. Things happen. Look at um, like in the U.S., Donald Trump's running for president. He's rewritten his whole history. Uh, so there's definitely an opportunity to fix stuff along the way. You know. Uh, so yeah, definitely don't give up. There's there's always a way uh, to reconnect with people in a better way. And yes, we can connect um, afterwards, or if you want to. Do an email or somewhere. I mean, whatever you want. Let's mm -hmm. do it. We have one more question yes. there, and I think we are. We okay. Don't have okay. Time. So we already talked Where about this. Oh, over here. Yeah. yeah. But I just want to make it like public now. Sure. Are you going to be the friend that is going to bring Gary next year to spark <laughs> me? <laughs> Gary V. <laughs> yeah. I tried to get him out here this year. Yeah, I know, but just to make it public oh. for I'll next try year. Harder. We're trying to get Gary V. <laughs> He's tough. I mean, so I've known Gary for a while, and I'll tell you a little backstory about Gary, and it's, it's in the book a little. I think I don't. Actually, this is the problem when you write a book. You write it, and then you cut it down. You don't even remember what's in it because you cut a lot of stuff out. But um, you read it for the audio. Oh, that's right. But I still – it's like a – yeah, it's like a black hole up here. Um, so basically, yes, Gary and I have known each other for a while. He came to one of our first D.C., Washington, D.C. tech cocktail events. He took the train down with his brother, A.J., and he, he approached me by email. He said, all in caps, in the true Gary style, I want to come to your event, and I want to give you money for – I want to sponsor wine. And, and it was just really aggressive in all caps. I ignored it. I was like, I'm not going to – this guy is crazy. He's all caps. He's yelling at me. <laughs> I've never met this person. Talking and about so the first impression. Right. And he's going to – yeah, first impression, right? He's going to give me money to host our event and wants to bring wine. I'm like, who is this? That doesn't happen. Um, you know? <laughs> and so – and we just – this is early. Like, people were not throwing money at us for our events, and they were definitely not offering free wine. So I was like – I ignored it, and then he wouldn't go away. Like, he just kept pinging me with, like – Come on, guys, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come down and take the train. I'm like, what the heck? This New Yorker is going to come down and bring us wine. So anyway, eventually we connected. So to your point, yes, you can fix things. Because um, <laughs> we were just like, this is weird. And he ended up obviously being uh, – at the time he was just doing his, his video blog. Uh, it, I don't think he was doing even wine. Well, he's just started Wine Library TV, and he brought down wine. His brother came out and hung, hung out with everyone. But I've known him for a long time, and obviously he's grown, uh, b written books, and done uh, done a lot. So I'd love to have him come out. He just because of his schedule lately, is he's tough. Like he's really tough. And we were trying to get him to come over. I was actually trying to get Tony Shea to come over because I know he's out here in this region right now for a wedding. That but was a secret. Oh really? <laughs> oh, not, not well anymore. Sorry, it's not a secret. Uh, <laughs> there's no secrets. It's in Las Vegas. So it's in, he's he's my neighbor, so it was easy to kind of catch up with him. He's also an investor in, in Techco. So. He was our seed investor. He we raised two point five million dollars about four years ago. And he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, he, we, he has okay. two llamas, which I love. <laughs> okay. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate you listening. And if you want to connect, it's on there. <laughs> all right.